Well, I can't claim this is a new, on the market, hot off the press, latest version pistol, because this one was found in the hands of Tutankhamun when they opened up his pyramid. It's the Timeless Crossman 2240. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. This week's pistol has its DNA firmly in 1954. Not quite Egyptian pharaoh period, but a considerable amount of past history for an air gun. Its forerunner was the Crossman 150. Before it, not so much morphed, but more Darwinianly evolved over time into the current 2240. And whilst it still looks like it was made in the 50s, don't underestimate this budget pistol. It's a design that has been going very successfully since before I was born. Heck, they will probably dig this thing up in a thousand years and the thing will still be going. It's quite a surprise, really, that I haven't reviewed this before, but I suppose we have been focusing on the glut of new stuff that's been coming. And it has been quite a considerable amount of stuff. But it is high time to correct that oversight. I own the rifle version of this and bought it years ago for my girls to use and for me as a super lightweight ratting gun due to its lightweight and simple use. I even loaned this to a very good friend of mine with a squirrel problem whilst he was recovering from cancer and had limited strength. Incidentally, squirrel problem solved and he's also got the all clear. But. Strangely enough, I've never used the pistol version. This rifle version of mine is currently shooting a little low on power. So after talking to Carl at Draper's, and if there's enough interest, we're looking at doing a tuning program, showing how to get it back up to the UK full power. After all, these are highly tunable and a great platform for customising, with loads of options out there. So, a rough price guide is around £96 UK. That's right, sub £100 UK for a full power pistol, and one that is going to last you your lifetime, probably. It is pretty lightweight at 810 grams, which is about 29 ounces, and is about 280 millimetres, or just over 11 inches long. It's 2.2 calibre and single shot, but they claim 460 feet per second, but more of that a little later. It is all metal and of basic design, but then again, so was the AK-47, and we all know how successful that has been. It has a 190 millimeter or about seven and a half inch rifle barrel on the top, which supports the front fixed sight. Below the barrel is the CO2 housing, which is rather like a PCP cylinder. Attached to this is the trigger housing and grip, which again are all metal, with the grips themselves made out of plastic in a faux ebony wood style. But as we've already said, these are accessorizable. These grips are ambidextrous and somewhat ergonomically shaped. The safety is a simple push through system behind the trigger, which effectively locks the trigger from going back. The trigger incidentally has a pull weight of just over four pounds, about 4.1 pounds, and is more than acceptable on such a budget priced workhorse. There is an ultra simple bolt action to cock the gun on the top rear. Simply pull back, drop the desired 0.22 pellet into the tray and slide it forward, locking the bolt into position. It is single shot only, but no complaints about that from me. And I've used the version of this for years and it has never bothered me once. To the very top and the rear 
is the rear sight, which again is open, but is adjustable. Not with anything more complicated though than a screwdriver and a slide it a bit. Nothing fancy, no click mechanism here. Loading the CO2 cartridge is a simple case of unscrewing the front of the cylinder under the barrel, slot in a 12 gram CO2 point first, close it up with the screw until you hear the hiss stop. Shot count is not as high as a lower powered replica type pistol. It's good though for around 30 shots in the right conditions. But this is hitting higher power figures. Talking of which, let's get the chrono out, shall we? Well, using standard 15.89 grain JSB 22 pellets, I saw 371 feet per second, which is a respectable 4.86 foot pounds or 6.59 joules. Then I thought about that elusive claimed figure of 460 feet per second. So I went for lighter 13.43 grain JSBs and saw 406 feet per second, which is an even more respectable 4.92 foot pounds or 6.67 joules. Whilst these figures are pretty respectable, I had a claim to chase. So into my drawer of trick pellets, and I came up with the H&N Field Target Trophy Greens, which are an alloy pellet, weighing in at a featherlight 10.03 grains. This produced exactly 460 feet per second. <laughs> Not bad then. Which is 4.71 foot pounds or 6.39 joules, and exactly what Crosman claim. Now, with figures like these, this is more than adequate to do a spot of rat or small pest shooting. Not pigeons, though. It is also pretty capable of a bit of target work. Again, talking of which, let's take a look at the 10 meter range. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm more than happy with that. Yes, the sights need a little adjusting, but it's the grouping that I was interested in, and it's pretty much made one hole. And let's not forget, this is a sub 100 pounds gun straight out of the box, or plastic. This is actually quite a pleasure to use. It's very capable and great fun, as well as being a really useful tool around a farm and the like. Yeah, it's CO2 and of course susceptible to cold conditions, affecting that performance. But as a backup ratter in your coat pocket, it's an amazing little gun. That is, of course, if you're not looking for the latest design or blowback replica type action. But if you're just after a gun that does the job, then you probably don't need to look any further. Goodness knows, thousands and thousands of people before you have looked at this and thought that way. You probably won't find many people knocking this pistol. It's simple, it's effective, and it works. Certainly when it comes to the old fashioned design, the principle of if it ain't broke, don't fix it comes to mind. Thanks for watching.